today's video, we'd like to introduce to you the brand new uh, TVS-675. Um, the main difference with this unit over some of our other units is it's the first one we've done that's using the uh, new CPU from the Chinese manufacturer called Zhao Jing. Um, so the CPU is a Kaixian, um 8 core, 2.5 gigahertz. Um, so that's 8 core, 8 thread CPU. It's got built in graphics as well. So there's an onboard GPU which can do uh, HDMI 2.0, um, two very fast PCIe slots as well as some M.2 NVMe slots. So we're just going to kick off with a small presentation first, then I'll go into a bit of a demo uh, with some of the features I've got set up on it. Um, so here on the uh, the first page, it's uh, one of the, the big advantages of this unit over some of our other, uh, especially lower cost options, is it's a dual operating system option. So you can choose between the pre-installed QTS, or on the first screen of the setup wizard, you can pick to switch that across to our um, Enterprise ZFS-based operating system, which is QUTS Hero. So it's a completely uh, free swap if you want to do it. It's best to make that decision early on because once you've got data on the drives, um, you can't swap between the OSs uh, without um, resetting the drives. Um, so there's the uh, processor, it's a U6580, it's 8 core, 8 thread, 2.5 gigahertz system on chip, so it's got a built-in GPU. Um, it's also got two uh, M.2 PCIe slots, I think they're Gen 3 by ones um, You can also use SATA SSDs, SATA M.2s in those if you want to as well, instead of NVMEs. It's got two 2.5 two gig LAN ports on the back, which are compatible with uh, 1 gig LAN or 100 meg LAN as well if you want to use it, and you can do link aggregation with those. Um, and it's got the two uh, Gen 3 times 4 PCIe slots on the back, which is great for things like dual port 10 gig cards, M.2 SSD expansion for NVMEs or SATA SSDs, lots of options with those two PCIe slots on the back. Um, here's a quick summary with a bit more detail about that processor. Um, so it's got 8 meg of L2 cache, and it supports VTX uh, for virtualization as well. So I've got a virtual machine running on the one I'll demo later. Uh, and it's also got DDR4 RAM, um, but it can do HDMI 2.0 at 4K, and it'll also do transcoding um, at both uh, H264 as well as H265. Um, so here we have some other manufacturers using this chip, so we're not the first to use it, but there are um, uh, certain applications supplied by HP, ASUS, and Lenovo that all use um, the same uh, manufacturer of chip. Um, varying different models, some use the older 5000 series, some have the new 6000 series that we're using, um, but it's not a new thing. You will find this chip in some mainstream devices as well. Um, as we go on, so here's the front view of the unit, um, so you can see all the different um, uh, uh, ports and features of the unit. So on the front, um, you've got some LED lights. There's no screen at the top on this one, but you do have USB 3.2 Gen 2, um, so that's the 10 gig USB standard. If we move around to the uh, the back of the unit, you can see the two full height PCIe slots on the back, uh, built in PSU, um, some quite large fans, which means we can spin them quite slowly for some really massive airflow um, without making a lot of noise. Um, and you've also, again, on the back, got one of those uh, Gen 3.2 by 2 uh, slots, so that's 10 gig a second, as well as um, a couple of um, uh, standard 5 gig ports for peripherals or anything else that you want to connect. Uh, the, that can't take advantage of the 10 gig connection. Um, so as we look at the inside, so different places to install the M.2 slots and the RAM. Um, so very, very easy to upgrade everything in one place. Once you take it off, all the upgrades are just done right there on that side for uh, the, both the RAM and the M.2s. And here's a little um, compartmentalized cooling diagram which shows you how much noise the unit makes. Uh, so in, in full operation, it's only 23 decibels. Uh, which is incredibly quiet. So we've got different cooling compartments depending on whether it's the side for the CPU, the RAM and the M.2s, as well as the hard drive. So we only have to, uh, say, ramp up the fan on one specific side if we want to uh, do that to, to get it uh, to cool down the units. So it's a very nice chassis design on it as well. Um, here's some speed testing that we did. So with a dual port 10 gig card, we were able to get all the way up to over 2200 megabytes per second from the unit. And the test environment's listed down there at the bottom, so that's using one of our um, SFP Plus dual port cards. Um, but we were testing that just with the base configuration of the unit here, just 8 gig of RAM uh, running QTS. Um, the demo I'm going to show you is with QTS Hero, 
um, but that was using some Samsung 850 uh, SSDs on that, uh, that side of things. So now we'll jump straight into a bit of a live demo just so that you can see what the unit looks like. So here is the main um, interface of the TVS675. If I open up the control panel, we'll be able to see a little bit more information just about how it specs. So here we've got the 8 gig of RAM. Um, so I haven't put any more in it for the demo here. So everything I'm about to run um, is running on our QTS Hero operating system. Um, and also has just the default of 8 gig of RAM. But you can take this unit all the way up to 64 gigs if you want. Um, so here in the system status, we can see that we've got um, the uh, single module in there. So it does support dual channel RAM. So if you wanted to put another 8 gig chip there or a couple of bigger modules, you will get the benefit of the faster dual channel RAM. Um, and over here in the hardware information, we can scroll down. We can see that the system fan speeds, they're all spinning at about 1100 RPM. So it's going to be very quiet. Um, uh, in operation. It really, you really struggle to hear it when you're quite close to it. It's really quite a quiet NAS. Um, so we've managed to fit the, uh, the three fans in a six bay unit. So normally we'd wait to go up to an eight bay unit or what we'd sometimes call a 12 bay to get that many fans. But by adding the extra fan in that particular chassis size, we're able to really um, get some good airflow without spinning the fans so fast uh, that, uh, that you can hear it audibly. Um, so here's just a couple of applications that I've got running on this, so sort of ideal applications um, for this type of CPU. So I've got Virtualization Station running. Um, so in Virtualization Station, I've created a Windows 11 virtual machine. So I've allocated eight CPU cores and just two gig of RAM across to it. So if I open that up, it boots up in no time at all. So this is the, the new Windows 11. Uh, I've not done anything in it except set it up and, and get it running and go through the, uh, the setup wizard. Uh, so I haven't installed any extra applications. Uh, but this runs really, really well on this CPU. It's, it's working really well. So in terms of uh, speed and performance, this unit would be a bit quicker than the uh, 73A series we have, which have the Ryzen V1500B chip on it. Um, this CPU is going to run a bit faster than that simply because it's got a higher clock speed and uh, twice the amount of uh, cores and threads. Uh, so here's Windows 11, so if we just pull up the uh, system information here, uh, we'll see that the CPUs pass right through to the VM. So this is definitely running on this unit. So there we can see it there, uh, the Xiaoxing Kaixian CPU uh, running at 2.5 gigahertz, 8 cores, 8 threads, working great, absolutely no problem in this unit. Uh, so that's the, uh, the virtual machine that we've got running. And at the same time, I've also got a couple of um, CCTV cameras recording. So I've got a couple of um, uh, cameras uh, added into this setup. So here's some recording storage. I allocated two terabytes to the camera recording. And if I click into the camera settings, we can see that I've got a front garden and a back garden camera added and they're recording at a, a good frame rate, nine to 10 uh, uh, frames per second. Uh, so that's working absolutely great. And while all this is running on this NAS, um, so while it only does have eight gig of RAM in there, I still have that virtual machine running in the background just to illustrate. I didn't shut it down. It's still there using the two gig of RAM. Um, I'm still only at about 70% RAM usage on this. So it's working really well with this setup, running our QUTS Hero operating system. Um, I'll go through the configuration of the storage I've got set up here. Um, so I've got storage pool one, which is my system volume. So this is running on a pair of um, SSDs, so fairly small SSDs. I think the two 512 gig uh, Kingston SSDs. And down here at the bottom, I've got a separate, much larger storage pool uh, that's running on four hard drives. Um, so I haven't utilized any of the M.2 bays for this setup, uh, but that's, uh, that's how I've got it working now. And in terms of networking, um, I do have it connected into a 10 gig switch, uh, which will work also at the uh, 2.5 gig speeds. So we can see here, I've got it connected at 2.5 gig. Um, so transfers in and out of the device are, are really nice and quick. Um, so that's the uh, summary of the uh, TVS uh, 675, uh, which is the uh, using the brand new uh, CPU, the Xiaojing uh, Kaixian. Um, it's the 2.5 gigahertz, eight core, eight thread, x86 CPU um, with lots of PCIe lanes. So we can really accomplish a lot with it with those um, two PCIe slots in the back, as well as the NVMe, NVMe slots on the motherboard. Um, so it's a really good option for you, especially if you are considering something like our 73A series. Uh, you should be able to get a bit more bang for the for less money uh, by going with the TVS675, say these the uh, uh, TS673A or 873A. 
um, that we do have on offer as well. And just like the 73A series, this can run both operating systems, both uh, QUTS Hero um, as well as um, running the uh, standard QTS operating system. So again, that setup is done uh, immediately straight away from the uh, from the main setup. Uh, the first question you get asked in the setup wizard. So you can see that the H4.5.3, so this is the QUTS Hero operating system uh, that I've got on this unit. And um, if anybody does have any questions or I guess complaints about how I'm pronouncing the CPU, if anybody knows how to say it better, please do let me know um, in the comment section below. Um, I'd be happy to uh, relearn how we're, how we're pronouncing that. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, then please do like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or you want to get in contact with Craig or any of the team, then we do have a dedicated YouTube email address and you can find us there on youtube underscore uk at qnap.com. So until next time, thanks for watching.